Philadelphia High School for Girls, better known as Girls High, has been one of the best schools in Philadelphia for as long as anyone can remember. Nearly all of its graduates go on to get a college education and later pursue careers of their choice. When I found out that I had been accepted to Girls High, my whole family was excited. Never before had I been that happy to go back to school. I'll be class 261, graduating 2017. But as I prepared for my first day of school, news broke that schools might not open on time due to budget cuts to public education. Without funding, the School Reform Commission, the Governing Board of Schools, decided to permanently close 23 schools in the district. And there are still many specifics, of course, to be worked through, but this is the right decision at this time. No! You're off of me! What's wrong? I don't care. You Get stopped out. educating black kids for 400 years! You just let us into school and now you're putting us out! Putting us out of school! We don't even have an opportunity! And it's wrong! And everybody who says they're about kids in this city need to be here, need to stand up! And say it's wrong! They don't care. This is wrong! Even though Girls High remained open, it was hit by the cuts. This made me think, how are these cuts going to affect us students, the ones attending these now underfunded schools? Are all students now getting an equal education? I don't necessarily think the students in Philadelphia are receiving quality education across the board. We don't have counselors in our, some schools. We don't have nurses every day in school. My school. We have a nurse twice a week. That's not even safe. We're supposed to have a, a nurse every day in school. Certain teachers were just not here this year. And we're going to lose a couple more teachers next year. In the past, you would have 25, 26, 27, maybe 28 students in a class. Pretty manageable. Uh, now, almost universally, we have 33 students. That's the max we're contractually allowed to have in every class. That makes it hard to provide individual needs for students. It makes it difficult uh, to differentiate things for students. It makes it difficult to build relationships with students. Missing librarian at our school is like depriving me of my education because I do need a librarian. I used the library every day last year and now I don't have a library. So I don't have books that I need or study time and silence to get my work done. And a lot of my classes were short on textbooks. We always have to share. Some other classrooms, you can't take home the books to do your homework. You have to keep them inside of the school. And when you sit there and have to like wait on somebody else to get a book or a ruler or a calculator, half of the period, you, somebody's using it, and then you have to wait for that for your turn. So it's like what you learn, instead of learning the whole period, you learn half of the material because you couldn't get through it. Listening to students and teachers made it clear that the school district is not being taken care of. Which made me question, how is the lack of resources affecting students and who is really suffering? I study inequalities in high school conditions for United States students. When I teach uh, the Philadelphia situation to my students, I show this map that shows, uh, the, that shows all the districts, Philadelphia and then all the surrounding districts. What really stands out is if you look at instructional expenditures, Philadelphia's instructional expenditures per pupil is around $6,500, but then all of the outlying districts tend to spend uh, more than that and sometimes substantially more. So Lower Marion has over 10000 I think it's $13,000 in instructional expenditures. So you have these districts that are serving more advantaged populations and they also are spending more money on instruction. So. Uh, do, do I think that students in the Philadelphia area receive an equal education regardless of their background? That tells me probably not. I started my career as a high school English teacher in Miami, Florida, and that's really where I learned to think critically about the state of public education in this country. And I study student voice in education policy and school reform in Philadelphia. I did conduct a study this uh, past semester with high school students at a semi-selective citywide admit school in Philadelphia on the school closings. And we do know that school closings disproportionately affect low-income students of color. Now more than two million 
uh, black and Latino students attend what is called apartheid schools. And these are schools where fewer than 1% of the students are white students. So they um, largely go to schools that are outdated and crumbling. The um, educational environment is uh, is less rich. Students, teachers, and parents are fighting back. One group, the Philadelphia Student Union, is making sure that students' voices are heard in a big way. The Philadelphia Student Union is a youth-led organization, and we fight for a better education and public school system because we can see, like, the governor and Dr. Hype are, like, taking money away from education and putting it into, like, prisons, and that's not fair. So, like, Student Union give Philadelphia Student Union gives students a voice so they can go out and fight for the education because we are the ones, students are the ones being most affected by the budget cuts and school closures. So we should be out there on the front line saying something like stop closing our schools and things like that because students deserve better. Um, public schools deserve better. There's nothing wrong with public schools, it's just the people in charge, they're not giving us the money that we need. So like we fight. Students are the most important stakeholders in the educational enterprise. They are the ones who have the, the most at stake, the, the most to lose. And when we hear students testifying, um, it becomes very difficult to ignore. And it, I think the students' testimonies will build the, the public capacity and will to put pressure on politicians to um, fully fund education. The funding or closing schools shouldn't have happened or even have been an option. It's like we've gone back in time, like Brown versus Board of Education never happened. It's as if we've never made progress at all and schools filled with minorities are being targeted. I firmly believe that to make sure we all get a quality education, students, teachers, and parents should fight for the future of education.